In Sanfluencers praat ik met bekende en minder bekende personen over spiritualiteit. Want wat is dat nu eigenlijk, spiritualiteit? In deze aflevering praat ik met een Engels acteur en singer-songwriter. Hij is een echte Sanfluencer, want hij trakteert zijn 14.000 Instagram-volgers en 16.000 YouTube-abonnees regelmatig op inspirerende quotes en video's. Zijn meest bekende video is een cover van BTS, Dynamite. Die is al een half miljoen keer bekeken. Die cover werd ook opgepikt door het blad Glamour. Op hun YouTube-kanaal maakte zij een reactievideo samen met BTS. Dus in Nederland had je bijvoorbeeld Davina Michel, die werd bekeken door Pink. In Engeland had je deze man, die werd bekeken door BTS. En ze waren lovend enthousiast. Vandaag praat ik met... Jules West. I'm melting. I'm melting. Really? I'm melting. I'm melting. I'm melting. Jules, hey. welcome. It's so nice of you to make time for me while you're in Holland. Thank you're only here for Halloween. Gosh, I'm here till like Saturday morning. It's been like maybe barely 48 hours. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Not, not a lot of time, but I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah, you're enjoying Holland? Loving it. What do you like about it? You know, I feel like a lot of people here are a lot more like open and I'm just seeing so many people like enjoying life and just being so social. Like I must have passed through Utrecht the other day. And everyone just seems so lively, like just having fun, like outside with friends, and it just the energy just felt amazing. Because you live in England? Yeah, so I'm in London, living in London at the moment, and I grew up in London. But more recently, like I've spent some time living in other countries, other cities, and um, that sort of thing. And I recently returned to London. Okay. So. Because what do you do in London? You're an so, actor? Yes, so I was mostly working on music before, so I was a singer-songwriter and then transitioned more towards the film world, so now I'm getting into acting and so I've been working within the film industry in London, which has been really exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah, which movies can we see? Oh gosh, so this is the complicated thing about <laughs> film. A lot of them you can't really talk about because they get you to sign all these NDAs until they're out and so there have been some really exciting projects which I've worked on but the first one comes out next year so 2023 and then I can tell you what that is okay. once that's out but nothing I can mention just yet but it's exciting it's quite a big one okay it's a, it's a good one to watch it will be out in theaters you've also played the lost boy in Finding Neverland I did, yeah, that was, gosh, that's a throwback. <laughs> that must have been the first thing I did. I must have been about eight back then. Okay. Yeah. How was it like? I mean, that was incredible for me because ever since I was really little, I wanted to get into film. And so I wanted to, at first I wanted to be a stuntman, which my parents were <laughs> not happy about at all. They were like, um, that's not happening. No. Uh, but then I wanted to do like more acting and that sort of thing and I was on Finding Neverland and you know like getting to meet like Johnny Depp and the cast I didn't know who he was at the time everyone else was like oh it's Johnny Depp and I was like oh hi <laughs> um, but just the whole experience of like the set like being in this room which they've just turned into this whole other world was just incredible and as a singer-songwriter you also booked some success BTS saw your cover of them? They did. How was that like? I mean, that was crazy for me. I just couldn't see that coming at all. Like, I didn't expect it. And I think it was actually around a time when I was like, you know, I'm going to take a step back from the music side of things and probably going to like not do so many covers, that sort of thing. And then I get this random email. Like, I get quite a, a few strange emails, but this email was <laughs> like, hey, can we like just talk to you about your covers? And I was like, yeah, I guess so, but it seemed a little bit odd, yeah. but I was like, you know, why not? That's fine. And then things kept getting shuffled around and I was like, I don't know if these people really want to do this yeah. or if they're like that serious. Uh, but then we managed to jump on a call and they're recording it, you know, because easier to transcribe, whatnot. And so then eventually 
the person who I'm speaking to, they're like, okay, can I just get you to, they're like asking me a lot of background questions and they're like, can I just get you to click on this link? And then the link is BTS being like, hey, what's up, Mr. West? And for me, I'm not processing anything at all. I'm just like, oh, okay, this is BTS, cool. And then it, when my video pops up and they're reacting to it, then I was like, wait, they're actually talking to me yeah. and this is actually about my cover of it. And so it was so crazy to like yeah. see them responding to that. That video already has 19 million views. 19 million now. Wow. That's Does that crazy. mean something to you? I mean, it, it's crazy to know that 19 million people have probably heard, or maybe not 19 million, because I'm sure loads of people have watched it more than once, yeah. but a good couple of million people yeah. have seen me singing Dynamite, yeah. which is kind of crazy to me. Yeah. You have a lot of followers on Instagram mm -hmm. and subscribers on YouTube. How do you want to inspire them? I mean, for me, a big thing with my music is putting something positive out there. And like that's always been something which I've felt I've wanted to do with music. Like I feel like music is so powerful. And I feel like having a way to be able to communicate with people and unite people as well, like around the world. So like there'll be people like from Japan who like maybe be talking to fans from like the UK or um, France or whatever. And it's just nice to see people having like a common interest or like common threads and being able to just unite through that and so that's pretty much what I enjoy doing and my music tends to be speaking a bit more on like hope like for example gravity like kind of feeling like things are against you but you still want to keep going you still want to keep pushing and so that's what I'm doing with that because you only live once so I'm chasing my dreams call me crazy I'm ready to launch head and knock the ground will you still be here for me and if I can't come down Will you be my gravity? You also post spiritual quotes. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, you don't think they're spiritual? I mean, they are, but I guess for me I'm so used to them. Like it's just yeah. such a, a part of who I am that I don't really categorize it as spiritual. But if you break it down, <laughs> then yes, it, it is. You know, um, just quotes about kind of being able to elevate yourself and thinking about things in a different way. Mm -hmm where it's like, you're a bit more empowered to do things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel empowered? I do, especially when I meditate. Um, usually I start my mornings off with the meditation and I'm usually up really early before anyone else is up. <laughs> and so I feel like it's quite a cliche thing, but for me it just, it happened like really natural. And it was just nice to like have some still quiet time before like having to like for me it started in school so it'd be nice to have some quiet time before having to go to school and so I'd just like be still and like have some moments where I could just clear my mind and it made such a difference with my days yeah. like I wouldn't feel like I'm rushed or panicked it would just I'd be in the flow of everything because before you would feel that rush oh yeah like I would I'd feel it because I'd want to, I'm the kind of person who would want to do everything and I'd be like, let me try this thing, let me try that thing. And sometimes it's a little bit much, but whenever I meditate, it just feels like I can do that thing and I can do that thing. And it's like my mind is just clearer, it's like just focus on, yeah. on that. Because if people want to start with meditation, what would you should suggest? I mean, there are a bunch of apps and stuff now which are good for that stuff, but the main thing I would suggest is not to feel like I have to sit still and be silent for like an hour or anything like that because the thing with meditation is it feels, or at least to me, it's not like a thing which you just get instantly. It's a practice and a lot of times people try to meditate and they have loads of thoughts and they're like, oh I can't meditate because there's too many things going on in my mind and you have to picture it more like, like a dirty tap. So like say you run the water and the water comes out dirty, but if you turn the tap off again, then you know next time you turn it on, it's still gonna be dirty. But if you just leave the tap running for a while, it'll be dirty water, dirty water, but then eventually you'll get clean. to the clean water. Yeah. And so you just basically need to keep the tap running yeah. for a while. Yeah. So uh, what is spirituality for you? What does it mean? So spirituality to me, um, that just means connecting 
with things beyond the physical. Like, I feel like a lot of things are, like, you know, we see things and it's like, okay, well, this is what it is and that means this is what it has to be, like, because I physically see this. Whereas I feel like the spirituality side of things is kind of being able to believe in more than what you see. Like, for me, a lot of things are energy. You know, being able to believe in more than what you see. So, for example, with the whole energy side of things, I feel like me, when I first started in music, I kind of believed that I would be able to do things like, for example, like to go to Japan or, you know, travel around the world. And there was nothing for me which I could see at the time, which was like, yeah, you, you can do this. And I kind of believed before I saw it. And so I think being like, we're all like everything to me is energy. And so like, there's so much more than what we see. And so that's where the spiritual side of things come into it for me. How were you as a teenager? How was I as a teenager? Gosh, I was definitely very adventurous. Um, I, that was pretty much when I was starting to get into music, actually. And so I was adventurous, like trying loads of new things. But at the same time, I got into music really fast. So I think I must have been about 15 when I decided, hey, this is what I'm doing and I'm going to focus in on that. And it was actually like around the same time as like Justin Bieber was coming out with his music. And so I was like, you know, if this kid can do it, I can do it. Like, it can't, can't be that hard. Um, so that was like, I started more as a joke. And then my friends saw what I was doing. They're like, actually, you're pretty good. You should do this. And so like I started auditioning for like school plays. And, well, they forced me to. And then like, they, they literally like, pushed me in the room where they were all auditioning. And okay. so like physically pushed me in there. And so then I auditioned. Sounds like a movie scene. I mean, it kind of felt like it, actually. It was very dramatic. Yeah. But I was like, well, you know, I guess I'm here, so I'll just do it. And so I did that. I ended up getting the lead role oh, wow. in, in the play. And it was Little Shop of Horrors. And so I was seeing more in that. And it was just being on stage and, like, seeing people enjoying themselves at this performance, like, laughing, having fun with friends. I was like, okay, I want to do this. Is that where your passion for plants? <laughs> well, I don't know if that's where the passion for plants came from. Maybe there's like a little seedling which was planted then, and I'm like secretly hoping that one of them grows huge. But yeah, no, um, I do love my plants. Yeah. I definitely do love my plants. Huh. And yeah, it could be. Indeed. <laughs> And uh, uh, if you could give yourself an advice mm. when you were a teenager, as the person you are now, do you get my question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I get your question. I would, so my teen self, yeah. the advice I would give myself is to not take it personal. Um, because going through that and like, you know, going to like different meetings and things like throughout the industry, um, you get a lot of no's. And it, for me, it was one of those things where like you, you just have to really keep going, keep pushing, which I feel like I did, but I would often feel like I'd take it a bit personally. And so I'd be like, oh, this person doesn't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much out there going that you don't have the time to really take it personally. You just have to keep pushing and going for it. So. Mm. Did you expect yourself to be where you are right now at this moment? No, actually, no. I did not. So for me, I had a really, really specific plan. And it was like a really crazy plan. Basically, I thought I would have been... So by the time I was like 20, this is my plan. And I don't think I've shared this with anyone. <laughs> no. okay. But so like, by the time I was 20, I would have been like married to Selena Gomez, oh, wow. living in, in <laughs> Hollywood and whatnot, all of that kind of stuff. But as I got closer to that, it kind of felt, well, actually, this is where I want to flow and this is what feels more right to me. And so I think I would have done things a lot faster, but I wouldn't have necessarily have matured or had a lot, a lot of depth, which was yeah. something which I had to learn yeah. how to do things. And you never met Selena Gomez. I mean, we crossed paths a few times. We haven't like properly like spoken just yet, but 
I mean, <laughs> who, boy can read. <laughs> who knows? No, I, I, I feel like things have like moved on. We, we've moved on. From, you know, we, we've decided that it's best to, to go our separate ways. Okay. Meet other people. What dreams do you have left? So there, I feel like you know had some crazy ones then, but there's still a lot of things which I really want to do, and. So now that like, one of them is to be able to be leading, like a leading role in a very fun movie. So for example, like a Marvel movie, uh, that would be fun to be leading. And then also being able to grow my music career to a point where I can tour around and like sell out, you know, a nice sized um, venues like all around the world. So that is the aim. And do you have any advice for a teenager that teenagers that are watching that also want to become an actor or a singer songwriter? Definitely, the advice would be to not wait, because I feel like a lot of people are waiting. Like, okay, like I really want to do this, but I'm gonna wait for this label, this record label, to sign me. Or I'm gonna wait for um, this production company to find me, or you know, it's always waiting for someone else to give them that permission to go or to, to do it. Whereas I feel like where the magic happens is when you're like, okay, I'm not gonna wait for this. I'm gonna work on this short film with some friends. I'm gonna create a song with some friends and you just go for it. You don't wait for everything to align. You build with your friends. Um, like, so rather than like chasing all of the people who are already famous and already doing things, it's like, work and build things together with your friends get familiar with your craft spend a lot of time on it and then you know of course it's great to reach out for like to have mentors and things like that but you should definitely build a team like with your good friends and just start working on it mm -hmm. now don't wait and you say don't chase famous people mm -hmm. but you've worked with famous people you work with at sharon i have yes i mean how was that that was incredible and he is one of those people who are just pretty much how he comes across he's just the most like genuine person um i do remember when like when we had first met he like there was a few of us like backing for him and he came in and he was just like hey i'm ed and it's like yeah we know who you are but <laughs> he just he really does make the effort to be very personal and like get to know people around him and just really speak and just be very human with them and that's something I really admire for me meeting him and seeing that was like okay yes there are people in this space who can just be themselves and be so genuine and also go so far. Is it an example for you do you want to be like that when you're even more famous? I mean thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do aspire to that because it was something which for me was so inspiring because a lot of times you hear these stories of like people stepping on other people and not necessarily being the nicest of characters and oftentimes you can kind of think well is that how I have to be to really get a certain level of success and so seeing him doing that and being as successful as he is it's like oh no you don't need to do that and it was really reassuring so I'd love to be able to also embody that for other people and be like yeah you can also just be yourself and do your thing and people will still appreciate you. Okay. Then a final question. Okay. How zen are you? How zen am I? Yeah, on a scale from one to ten. In general or right now? <laughs> well, right now you're like a wonder. I mean, I would say I'm, I'm fairly zen right now. It's been a bit of a morning, but I'm I'm pretty zen right now. But in, in general, general, I would say I'm like a high seven, close to eight. Okay. As you know, maybe even, yeah, I'd probably say seven, high seven, eight. I was gonna say, because for me, it feels like I'm still working on it, but I guess sometimes when I meet other people, they're just like, wow, you're like so zen, like you're so chilled. And yeah, for me, I guess it's something I work on. And also, you know, living in London and driving mm -hmm. in London, I feel like you kind of have to have a level of zen, otherwise you kind of go crazy because there's so much happening on the road. But um, I definitely make sure I work on that on like a day-to-day -day basis because I kind of feel like once you get used to just having it, then 
that's when you kind of start to lose it a little bit. And so it's like every day I'm like trying to be conscious of how I am being present and just being in the moment as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. And hopefully I will see a lot of you on Netflix or YouTube and uh, I'm gonna watch all your new videos. <laughs> thank you. There will definitely be some fun things yeah. coming out fairly Look soon. Out for that. Thank you for your time. Of course. En jullie bedankt voor het kijken. Laat vooral in de reacties weten wat jouw dromen zijn. En doe een duimpje omhoog. Abonneer. En graag tot de volgende video. En stay safe.